let us know where you're uh, joining us from. I see some familiar names. Hi, Nikolaos. Uh, you can always use the chat at the bottom to let us know what school you're coming from or what country you're coming from. And of course, you can also use uh, the same place to put any questions or to raise any issues about today's webinar. We're also going to make a recording of this afternoon's session and make that available for people uh, later on. So you are very welcome to share it with colleagues. We'll let you know when it's available online. Um, and I just wanted to remind you, uh, this is the ISE portal and website, uh, which presumably you are already familiar with. Um, also to remind you that this is something we're running at the moment, the Ob ISE Observing Challenge, uh, which Chris North spoke to us about a couple of weeks ago from Cardiff. So that is open until the end of June. So um, please do take part and win yourself a very nice poster for your classroom. Uh, we are also keen to get as much survey information as we can at the moment because uh, we're coming to the end of the funded part of the ISE project, which means that it's important for us to get as much feedback as we can. So you'll find a link on the front page of both the portal and the website to the ISE survey, and we'd really like to ask you to complete it for us. And uh, thank you, as you can see, Meeting Support is putting the links in to, the, um, to where you'll find these various different uh, for more information about the survey and also observing challenge. But let me hand over to Rosa now, who is going to take us through the light pollution scenario. You can ask questions during the time if you want to. We'll also have an open microphone time at the end uh, if you'd like to join us via audio. And uh, we hope there'll be lots of time to answer any questions that you might have. Rosa. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It's uh, a privilege to be here with all of you. Uh, luckily enough, I know most of you, if not everyone. So it's uh, very nice to have you here accompany me in this uh, light pollution journey today. I know that some of you uh, are already uh, aware of this growing problem and already doing the best you can to, to fight it. But uh, it is uh, very frightening what's going on in the world about uh, light pollution and how we are losing our skies. And there are several reasons why this is a problem and, and why we should fight it the best we can. So we had this opportunity of creating a, a scenario in Inspiring Science Education to help you um, share this problem with your students. Uh, and this is what I want to, to, to navigate through with you. It's how you awake their knowledge about light pollution, how you create a worry on them that uh, there's something to be done and over more, uh, something, uh, uh, a reason for them to fight it and how they can fight it. So we uh, understand that students are the, the best solution in the world to find and help us fight light pollution. Now, the problem is that most people in the world have not heard about light pollution. They don't know what it is. And actually, in many places where I go, people make fun out of it. Light pollution, I mean, this is impossible, light pollution. And so when you explain and you tell that the, the, the problems that arise from light pollution, people get really scared and worried because it's a problem that we are just starting to, to understand. So this is what I'm going to, to, to share with you today. And I start with uh, this very new release. It's from last week or two weeks ago. Uh, they just made a new world atlas of artificial uh, night sky brightness. And uh, this is a very frightening picture, really, really frightening. It's, it's, it's something like a horror movie. If you think about this, uh, and if, if you were here in presence with me, I would ask you, why is it possible from us, for us to see uh, uh, this illumination from the sky? If you think about it, that means that uh, all these places that you see in yellow and in red are places where there are too many lights facing upward, facing to the sky. Okay? And uh, I mean, if you ask yourself, if you want to go anywhere and you want to illuminate it, what do you do? What is the first thing that you do? You point your flashlight where? To the sky or to the ground? To the ground where you're walking. And usually, if you are smart enough, you will say to the ground because I want to see where I'm walking. And in fact, most of the light poles in this world are facing upward. So they are actually illuminating the stars. 
And what is the benefit of that? Now I cannot say there is no benefit. There is one benefit. I click in the, s in the next image, which is a beautiful image of, e of Europe seen by the International Space Station. It's the Earth from the sky. It's beautiful, very beautiful. But is it worth it to pay something like, for instance, every 10 euros that we pay for light illumination, nine are being used so that an astronaut in the International Space Station can make this pretty picture. Do you think it's really worth it? I don't think so. And this is causing so many problems. And this is what I'm going to, to, to show you. So in this uh, uh, next slide, you can see uh, uh, what astronauts see when they are up there. So this uh, in the top right, you see an astronaut in the window that they say it's their fi favorite one, where they look to the Earth. So the International Space Station make a complete uh, uh, circle around the Earth every 90 minutes. So they see the sunrise, the sunset, the night side, the day side. So it's a beautiful picture. And the picture that you see, the big picture, is the picture uh, uh, of uh, the Iberian Peninsula. And you can see how much light they can see from the International Space Station. Again, this is all light bulbs that are facing upward. They are, they are pointing towards the sky. This is a picture from Lisbon by night, a beautiful city. And uh, you can see the horror picture it is. Because, I mean, you have, I don't know how many lights, how many lamps that are uh, illuminating the photographer that are in the other side of the Tagus River. So basically it's wasted energy, wasted light. It's not making anything more beautiful, it's just uh, spoiling the, the picture that could be even prettier. Now you ask yourself, well illumination is important, of course it is. And if it is properly done, there's nothing wrong with it. And actually, I show a picture here. It's uh, the, the space from Earth. And this is a beautiful picture taken by an astrophotographer in Portugal called Miguel Claro. Actually, the background of my PowerPoint is also a picture by him. And it shows the picture, the, the sky, the Milky Way, seen from Alentejo, which is a region in Portugal where we don't have that much light pollution. And this is the sky that everyone should see. And in fact, if you think well, I would like to see the sky. If you are not sure if you would like to see a starry sky, remember that first experience you had in a planetarium, where you enter a planetarium, the darks are going out, and then you see that beautiful starry sky. It's amazing. I adore that. But then at the same time, we feel pathetic, because that means that I have to go inside a building to see a projection, an artificial vision, that tries to, to create the same feeling I would have if I was outside. And why is that? Because outside I cannot see anything. So this is really a horrible, a horrible thing. I have to go inside walls and simulate the sky that belongs to us. It's our world heritage. It's free. It's for everyone. And we are losing that. That means that we are losing the contact of the essence of what we are. We are losing the contact with everything that sparkles our interest to know more. Where are we? What are we? What are we doing here? Is there a purpose or is there no purpose? What is the universe? Is everything I see all or is there more? So all this curiosity is part of being human. And the fact that we don't see the dark sky, I think are making, is making us less humans. Actually, the fact that we don't see the sky it's making us lose our sense of scale. And if, if you don't know how small and fragile our planet is, then you can behave in improper ways, like uh, wasting the resources that we have in our planet for us to be alive. No one is spoiling our planet. We are just making sure that all the conditions that are necessary for us to be here are, are being d destroyed very quickly. And if you have a sense of scale, you know that going to another star, living in another planet, is not something easy to be done. It's actually very complicated. So losing the sky, losing the dark, brings this very first and one of the most complicated issues to solve. You're, we're stopping to being humans. Now, 
what is light pollution and what is the origin of light pollution? Well, light pollution comes from cities usually. Okay, it can come from our houses. Actually, if you look at this uh, image here, you see the many buildings that are illuminated at night and there is nobody in, nobody working there. Even the little towers on top of the buildings are illuminated or laser beams to call for attention. All of this is destroying our night sky. Okay, it's preventing us from, uh, from um, seeing the beautiful sky. But far more than that, it's also spoiling artistic view. For instance, I show you this beautiful picture of Van Gogh, the, the starry night over Rome. And we know nowadays, if you visit the place where he painted this picture, he couldn't have done it nowadays, because we, can, we cannot see stars from there. Basically, we, we don't see any any star in there. But there are far worse problems. So, it's a waste of energy. It's a waste of money. Of course, you, you're wasting energy. You're wasting money. It, if you're producing energy, you are producing atmospheric pollution. You have impact on living beings because our planet does not go to sleep anymore. So, birds and flowers and plants and other small animals, insects and um, all the fauna, including us, is not sleeping anymore. We don't have nights anymore. So, this has a huge impact on us. I will show you that a little bit later. And, of course, it has a big uh, obstacle to astronomical observations. I think that uh, most uh, big cities in the world had or have observatoriums. Uh, in Portugal, for instance, we have three that can no longer be used uh, to do research with uh, night sky objects because they are located in heavily light polluted areas so that uh, they, they cannot see the stars anymore, so they, they cannot do uh, research there. And this is, of course, a problem. So, what, is, what are the types of light pollution? Okay, so you have, you see in the picture on the, on the top uh, right, you see uh, glare. So there's too much background light, okay? Reduces visibility. You pra practically you don't see the sky. Then you see uh, on the the bottom right light trespass, light that goes into our houses. How many of us cannot really have darkness in our houses because we have light illumin illuminating inside our houses? And if you think about it, if I live in a building like this one that is shown in, the, in this picture. Why should I have a light pole illuminating this at this height? At this uh, height, so it's the light is coming inside my house. Why? Okay, so there is no purpose, no reason for that. The the, the on the bottom left, you see uh, accumulated light. So you see too many li too many uh, um, lamps uh, accumulated in the same place. All of this is unnecessary illumination. Okay. So, you see here a few examples. You s uh, on the top uh, left, you see uh, someone decided to illuminate their building. And as a result, the, the other building is also illuminated. We see that coming from neons and some even buildings, really buildings that are trying to illuminate for security reasons. Then we see that they are illuminating the, the, the other building. And on the right, you see how it should be illuminated. If you want to illuminate your building, fine, but illuminate it properly, okay? Um, and then uh, 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 on the bottom, you you see the uh, shielded lights, and then you see on the left, you see a boy. The boy is being illuminated, and on the right, you see a wrong type of illumination. It's causing a really a lot, a lot of uh, light pollution. So why do we illuminate? And why do I advocate, and I advocate, for having uh, light in the streets? Of course, there is no problem with that. But you need to take into account that you have to build it properly. So on the left, you see a house that uh, the owner decided to illuminate uh, the, the, the house uh, so that no one would trespass and enter their garden. Okay. And if you see, if you look very closely to the picture, you will see that uh, there is a man in the fence that I don't see on the top, but I see on the bottom. So the moment I, I cover, I shield the light, I see the man standing in the gate. Okay. So again, the illumination is fine, 
but is not properly shielded. If you see the car, for instance, it's the same problem. Can you see so, a person crossing behind the car? So it's a very dangerous situation where we don't see what's going on. So the problem continues because it affects our health. So I showed you an example where light is coming inside our, our uh, rooms, our house. And actually, you can see uh, um, inside the houses many times, uh, you can see uh, uh, computers uh, turned on or TV LEDs or your mobile phone, different types of light uh, pollution inside your very house. So what happens then is that we are beings in this planet and when our species started to be created there were clearly distinction between day and night and uh, our body is prepared uh, to have certain number of hours of deep sleep and during that deep sleep we produce important hormones that regulate our bodies okay if you don't have enough deep sleep hours you get sick or even worse, you don't produce the hormones that are necessary to prevent you to be sick. Nowadays, there are several studies being uh, uh, performed, and they are relating it to obesity, stress, depression, diabetes, and even other problems that we, we are just starting to uncover this. Okay, people are just starting to to think about this and real research and do real research about this. So it is really a complicated uh, uh, problem and something that we need to solve. But not only for us, for instance, in many places in the world, you have turtles coming to, to, the, the, to the beach, and uh, the mother will put the, the eggs under the, the, uh, the sand, and then when the, tur the little turtles hatch, they look for the reflection of the light of the stars and the moon in the ocean, and move towards that direction. If there are lights, street lights, illuminating and the little turtles see that they can go in their opposite direction and of course they are a much easier prey for the predators or they just don't even reach the water and they die. Several species of turtles are being instincted because of that. When I say turtles I can say other animals. For instance you can see here a, hor a horrible picture of birds that collide with buildings, one building in the US. Every year in the US alone, a hundred million birds die. When they are in their, their migration path, they uh, find artificial structures. Sometimes they are the, the, uh, um, confused by the street illumination or the building's illumination, and they collide with these structures and die. So this is another, another problem that we can see uh, happening as a consequence of light pollution. You see also sometimes that insects are attracted by artificial light and of course that is not their natural habitat. And what happens is that they are no longer going to be found in their natural habitats and the animals that are eating them cannot find food or you will find some animals that are going to, to live around this light because they want to eat the insects and they are not going to control the growth of insects in other areas where their control was very important. So you start to have plagues. You can, s you can see, for instance, this picture of, the, of this uh, bat. Uh, some bats will change their, the, the way they behave and approach the lampposts and uh, to eat more uh, insects that are there and not eat where they were supposed to be. And some will escape. Uh, the light because they don't like the light. This one that is being shown here, the lesser, lesser long-nosed bat, it is they, they are responsible for pollination. So that is not going to happen properly. And it, you can see, you know, this the problem scaling up. Where is it going to end? Eventually, it ends up in our food. Okay, we don't know that. These are things that we still don't know. The impact of uh, light pollution in the in the cycle of uh, food processing. You can also see, obviously, the impact on astronomy. So you see this important observatory, Mount Wilson, in California. And uh, you see it in, in, in the top, uh, 1908. And in the, in the bottom, you see 2008, uh, which is the year they took the second picture. Now it's even worse, where you see a lot of light pollution. Okay? Um, 
At the end of this presentation, uh, uh, we will share with you this uh, light pollution map where you can find the situation in your town, uh, your municipality. Uh, if we have time, I will invite you to go with us there and check how well your municipality is doing in terms of light pollution. Okay? Uh, so, how do we solve this? It's not that hard. Actually, a little child can, can do this and tell architects and mayors how to do it. We've been doing this in Portugal with hundreds of kids. So, you see here an example of a very bad illumination, the one at the bottom. And these are the typical ones you see, for instance, in Portugal, it's filled with them. It's the globes. They illuminate everything except what they have to illuminate. But because architects think this is beautiful, they have tons of them everywhere. It's in light invasion, it's not uh, uh, energetic, efficient, so everything is wrong. Then you have the bad one. Uh, bad because, uh, well, it illuminates what uh, it's supposed to illuminate, but it's promoting, it's provoking lots of light pollution, okay? So it's bad. And then you have the good one, which is you have the lamp fully shielded. It's fully covered. So it only focus where it should focus. And more than that, it has a proper angle. So it's only illuminating what is supposed to be illuminated. Okay? Now, I can show you an example. This uh, are some friends from Brazil. Gustavo Rojas was kind enough to give me these pictures, where he, he shows an example of, la uh, of poles that are prob properly built. So you see the whole lamp is inside the pole and it is uh, uh, facing downwards, so it's perfect. But still, when you look at it at night, on the bottom left, you can see that there are too many, uh, still too many uh, light poles over there. So there's still some space for, some room, room for improvement here. You can also uh, think about uh, places that have to be illuminated during the night, like, for instance, a gas, a petrol station, right? So take a look at the difference between the, the picture on the top and the picture on the bottom. So the, the, the owner changed the way uh, he illuminated the, the, the his petrol station. And uh, I don't think I need to ask you which one is better. Of course, it's the bottom one, right? It's the one that is... Uh, far better than, than the other one. Of course, there is some money that is necessary to be spent there uh, in order to put in this shape, but afterward, he will certainly reduce his uh, uh, illumination view by half, if not more, and will not uh, promote, promote light, uh, light pollution, will, will not be a source of light pollution. Uh, in, in, in here, I show you, um, and because Inspiring Science Education is trying to help teachers create solutions to create awareness about, uh, around certain topics. So we have uh, this possibility to partner with the uh, NOAO, National uh, Optical Astronomical Observatories of the U.S. They are, in my opinion, the best site for, uh, for the uh, production of material to fight light pollution. They just released this uh, quality lighting kit. If you're interested in it, you let me know. I will put you in touch with them. And this is part of their kit. You see an example where they are simulating a globe and uh, how, what would happen to a street when you have a globe. It illuminates everything except what is supposed to be illuminated. And if you shield the globe, just putting a cover on it, you see that uh, the things are got much better improved. The, the improvement is far, far, far more. You can now see everything, illuminate everything that you want to illuminate in all the buildings. The same goes to, 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 to cities. You see here an example of a city that changed the, their whole uh, illumination. Um, you see on, on the, the top how the city was before and now how the city is now. And uh, besides uh, uh, saving a lot of money, uh, it's saving the sky and uh, offering to uh, the people living in uh, those uh, streets a better quality of life. Actually, in Portugal, we had we have a program that is called uh, Dark Sky Ranger. You can see the logo, logo on the top uh, left, on the bottom left. Uh, Dark Sky Rangers is a project that we have in partnership with National Optical Astronomical Observatories where we have students fighting light pollution. So again, if you want to know more about that, you can, uh, you can also uh, contact me. And the idea is to have students producing um, um, an evaluation of their, their street 
and uh, delivering to the mayor uh, their reports and asking the mayor to change it. And we had a very good example in Portugal, a seven-year-old did that, and he managed to convince uh, the mayor of a very big town to replace the illumination of the street, a seven-year-old. So it was an amazing experience, and it, it, it was not, not hard to do. So this is the purpose of the scenario that we created for Inspiring Science Education, is to help you do that with your students. I'm also going to show you a simulator uh, later on uh, uh, after I finalize showing you all uh, the, the, the steps of the, the scenario. We will navigate through the, to the different tools with the help uh, of uh, our support here for the meeting and I will show you how to, leave, to, to use this uh, needless slide simulator. It's online, it's free and it's very user friendly. You can easily show the effects of light pollution just but by putting lamps over there, then covering it partially and fully shielding it, and you will see the difference it makes. You can you can have actually the the, 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 the last step is not here, which is uh, diminishing the, the height of the pole. So you can have starry skies and illumination at the same time. In fact if we think why we illuminate things. For instance, in this example here, we have a house, and the, the owner of the house wanted to illuminate the road. So if you want to illuminate only the road, what happens is that uh, you, if you lower the, 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 the height of the pole, you can go it, uh, to, to the height of your knees. You, know, you don't need it higher than that. And then you illuminate uh, the, the, the pole, okay? Uh, Sally, is there any problem? Rosa, be, be, yep, no, no, no problem. But before you go into the various different tools, there are a couple of questions in the um, in the in the chat which I'd love to put to you. Could we do that quickly? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I don't hear you, Rosa. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, yes, yes, yes. A couple of very good questions in there. First of all, from Hubert. He asked about reflection from the ground. In the case that you direct all light towards the surface, you will still have reflection towards the sky. Question mark, what do you do in that case? So reflection from the ground. Uh, so there's not much you can do about that. There is some reflection. Uh, and if for that reason, you won't have a perfectly dark sky. But you have to regulate the, the, the power of your bulb so you minimize this effect the best you can and also you 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 can um, have a, a, the, a ground in such colors that reflects less so you diminish what we call the albedo I, there are proper materials that you can use that don't reflect so well the light so you won't have that problem that much okay and then no no thank you no no you gave us a link to a strange ball shaped lamp but i think it's a link to a dropbox and i'm not sure i couldn't open it so if you have a public uh, picture that we can have a look at we can have a look at that one so there's a strange strange shaped light and there's a strange shaped light and then there's also a question from Anita uh, from Croatia and she was asking you you showed a picture a few moments ago of a, of a city uh, bad light, good light in the city. She was just curious, what city is that? Do you know? It's a city that in one. Chile. Do you know what in that Chile, is? Uh, Chile, uh, yeah, Chile uh, is uh, the place where we have m most observatories because in the desert where no no life exists because it's really hot and dry, it's the best site to put a telescope. And then uh, they try to work with mayors of the cities in the neighborhood to prevent light pollution. And this particular city, I'm not 100% sure, but almost sure that uh, this is in Chile. So it's a before and after of the same city. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very impressive. And then definitely the remark of the day goes to Hubert. When we were young, we threw stones at the street lights. I presume you're not promoting that, but um, it's an interesting social <laughs> observation. Uh, so, Nuna, thank you very much. Also, I see you've come back about the. Uh, we'll go and have a look and see if we can see that picture. And I'll switch myself back off again, Rosa, back to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, actually, I'm, I'm just uh, finalizing here, uh, and I'm going to show the scenario, because, uh, I mean, we can, again, if, if any of you feel the need to organize another uh, webinar, just talk to us. We'll be available to you to it. Actually, the guys from the NOAO are all the time promoting webinars and on how to use their tools and building new tools and new resources. So. Uh, we, are, we, we in Spining Science Education will be very glad to, to connect you to all the resources we have in the platform, all the, all the scenarios, and to communicate 
communicate with you the best we can. So what we did was, I'm going to navigate uh, the, the, the scenario. We had some, some problems with me sharing the screen. And uh, because I know these things happen, I had a backup plan, which is here. And I'm going to, to, to go uh, through the scenario. And uh, in the end, I can, again, uh, provide the orientation on how you get there, how you get your own scenario. So Inspiring Science Education is built in a platform that is called Open Discovery Space. And it, it's a platform that hosts several thematic communities. We have one community that is specific for Inspiring Science Education. And for those of you that like astronomy, we have one devoted to astronomy. It's called, it's, it's in Portuguese, it's called Astronomia Hands-On. But uh, we have uh, lots and lots of uh, materials in Portuguese, Spanish, and English in that community. Okay? We, had, we have something like uh, 300 users or more or more users just in that particular community. Actually, we have a community just for light pollution there as well. I forgot uh, to find that link, but if you go to the, to the portal and you search for light pollution, uh, you will find us there, okay? Or again, at the end, we will provide you my email. Just contact us and we will find, we will find a way to provide you access to all of this. So we created this scenario that is called uh, light pollution. And inspiring science education, ah, so I, I was telling you about the communities, and then you have another tool, which is the authoring tool, that allows you and guides you to build a scenario using the inquiry learning methodology. It's a methodology that uh, uh, tries to engage students in the scientific discovery. So instead of telling students, instead of doing what I did today, and uh, instead of telling them there is light pollution, this is what light pollution is and these are the effects and memorize this and, and answer some questions, in inquiry uh, um, invites them to discover by themselves that this is a problem and to propose to us what solutions they would, they would take in order to solve the problem. So in this scenario, you have the, the orientation phase, which is when you sparkle the curiosity of the students. Okay? This is one of the most important phases of inquiry, is the moment when you, you, you awake the curiosity for the student. Because usually, I mean, they don't know what light pollution is. They don't care about that. If you enter the classroom and say, Hey guys, there is a thing called light pollution, and I'm going to show you the effects and how you can solve it. Might be good, but I mean they're not curious about that. So the first thing is to awake the curiosity. So in this scenario, you will find this picture, which is recently released by National Geographic Kids, and there is a very nice article there related to it. You have uh, uh, um, two movies, uh, a, link, uh, a link to two movies that uh, target the problem of light pollution. And so the idea is that after uh, the, 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 the students will see this, they will certainly be curious to know what is it and what can they do about that. Okay? So this is the, 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 the initial phase. And um, these scenarios have uh, an added value uh, uh, that uh, we created from Inspiring Science Education team, which is the problem solving questions that tries to help you evaluate the, the, the competences in problem solving from your students. Um, you can also create your scenario using the altering tool and you can choose to use or not use the problem solving but for the demonstrators and this is one of uh, the scenarios that we call demonstrator uh, because it's reviewed uh, by, by uh, experts in the team in the field and in the team of uh, inquiry and the problem solving questions so you can, you can use this one uh, that is ready for you to use and the questions are there and in the end I will show you where you find information about the performance of your students so this is very rich environment to help you uh, uh, evaluate what's going on with your students without having them feel that they are being assessed all the time. Okay? Um, the next uh, uh, step is to have them create their own, their own hypothesis. So there is some guidance here on how uh, you should build this, how you should do this with your students, how they should uh, build their own hypothesis, and, and to create their, their hypothesis using uh, a Google Doc and deliver that to you. Uh, I will show you after I, f I finish showing you the, the, the division of the scenario. There is a tool that is integrated in the scenario that allows students to make some calculations on what happens 
with the different choices they have. So it's a, a tool that is embedded in this scenario where you can choose um, the number of light poles you're using. You can choose from t 3, 6 and 9 or you can choose the different height of the poles. I don't remember by heart which are, which are the heights. Uh, you can change the, the, the type of bulb. Uh, you can change the power of the lamp and you can change uh, the, the, sh the, the type of shield that you use. So all of these have different consequences um, and, uh, it, um, in terms of uh, being visual and immediately giving you feedback on what's going on, need needless light is better. But this one allows you to calculate outputs, which helps when you are making a, an, au an audit of a street. It helps you to know what you have to take into account. Okay? Then uh, they go to um, another uh, phase, which is they have to gather the result and analyze the result. And there is some guidance for it there as well. And at any point, so uh, this was created by us. And uh, some teachers saw it. But uh, maybe you don't like it. Maybe you would like to, to produce a different analysis interpretation uh, page with more things in it, with more uh, options or more enriched. You can clone this scenario and uh, modify it at your will. You can create your own scenario. Actually, you should clone the scenario to have your own assessment, to have your own copy that you can tailor to your own specific needs. Okay? Um, then there is the conclusion phase. Uh, where uh, uh, we we invite the children to reflect on what and evaluate the, the what they've done, and there is a link for the needless slide because we invite children to communicate uh, their the outcome to uh, the, their families, and to do that we advise them to use the needless slide scenario. So this is all part of uh, what you will find uh, in the um, in the in the platform. Um, so if you are a member, I will show all of this uh, uh, in, in a, a few moments, but uh, if you are a member, just search for Light Pollution Demonstrator. It's part of the Hispanic Science Education community. Copy it, and you have, you, you have uh, your own. You probably know by now how to, to clone. We have many teachers that are already doing that, and many teachers, many, many hundreds of teachers that are creating their own scenarios. Uh, or if you don't want that, you can use the links that I have uh, that uh, that you see uh, here, and use um, the the student view uh, that uh, we created for you. The uh, so you can use immediately the scenario by following this link that is written over there. The only shortcoming is that you cannot see the assessment of your students. If you want to see the assessment of your students, you have to create your own or ask us to create a. a um, a couple of scenarios to you and provide to you the teacher link and the student link. Okay? You also can preview the scenario using the link uh, below that one. You also uh, see um, the scenario there. So, um, in terms of PowerPoint, I think this is it. And now I would have to, to, to ask uh, our friends from the support team. I could, uh, we were unable to share my screen, so we are going to share, uh, they are going to share the screen uh, with you. Uh, maybe while the screen is being shared, uh, Sally, do we have more questions or are we okay for the time being? I think we are okay for the time being. Uh, people saying that they're very positive about uh, the talk. It's a really motivating topic. I can easily see how teachers could get really excited about this. Mm -hmm. And certainly in terms of having a social impact, it's very, very interesting. So while we're waiting to share the screen for the moment, if anybody else has any questions for Rosa, maybe you could put them in. It's interesting when you say seven-year-olds, I presume you can start applying this kind of thing from very, very early on, can't you? Up to quite up yeah. to teenagers, yeah, right? We've been doing the this process. Thing. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. How was from, from eight months to, to ninety years? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the youngest. Uh, this was this was the group. It was Francisco Pires. Actually, if you go to um, let me find the site, you will see Francisco Pires there. Uh, exactly. I'll copy the site here. You can see uh, mm -hmm. 
several videos there. Actually, we have a Facebook page for the Dark Sky Rangers, and in the in that in our Facebook page, you see Francisco there as well. He was the youngest one. Oh, actually, actually, he was not. He was not. The first Dark Sky Rangers we had, they were six year olds, and uh, they six went to the streets with their parents. They went to the streets with their parents to mark uh, the, 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 the light poles in a Google map and uh, the type of illumination they had and to make an audit. And the funny thing was the, the little guy won an award and uh, when he came to receive the award he told us that being a scientist was really very hard. He knew that doing research <laughs> was something that is really very hard. And we asked him, why would you say that? He said, well, because in my research this is five or six year old six six year old boy. In my research I had to get up very early to see to see when the lights are turned off in my street. And that was really hard. <laughs> so uh, that is that Science was that was painful. really, really fun. Really, really fun. Yeah. we're seeing all sorts of things on the screen at the moment, including okay, my colleague's so uh, travel agenda. But I think we now have the correct one for you. So you see this one? The okay. two screen. You need uh, to. So, so for everybody, every, sorry, if I can just warn everybody, you need to you need to click fit to screen, which is on the screen in front of you, to be able to see the full screen on your own screen. So fit to screen works fine for me now. You see it, Rose, as well. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe everyone can can we can give just a little moment so that uh, everyone can click on fit to screen. Yeah, I have right. that in We're my own. I can see the screen in my own as well. Yeah. We are now looking at the okay. uh, double screen. So if we can so go maybe back we to can the start using the tool. Back to the tool. There it is now. Okay. Yeah. Over you are. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, no, the other one. The other one first. The 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 the, the one that you wear. That was perfect. Exactly. So uh, I would ask you to please go there and select nine light poles. Just click, uh, click again. Yeah. Then you select the height, please, to be uh, the highest one, which is the button below. Yeah. That's it. And now please select the bow type. Uh, well, you can leave the bow type to HSP. Yeah. And. Uh, the link below 50 watts is okay and then change the shield also no the last one yeah that one yes uh, no another one click once more yeah that's it and then it, uh, go to the tab that says run the experiment no 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 I want the globe I want the globe so uh, no 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 the, the globe exactly yeah run the experiment and then uh, run the start the experiment, and uh, what you will see it's uh, a supermarket that is uh, illuminated. Uh, so we don't have a lot of light pollution there. So the, what is used is nine, nine light poles. They are very high. Uh, the 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 lamp bulb. Well, now you see a lot of light pollution there. Okay, so it doesn't look very good. I think it, we could make it a little bit uh, better. Ouch, it's invading the houses for sure. It's illuminating the high houses, it's too high. Okay, Mati, if you could go back please and uh, set the experiment options again. And now you go to the best one, which is 3. And uh, 4 meter, and then the LED and fully shielded. The last one, fully shielded. Yeah, that's it. And then run the experiment again, please. So down, down, it's down there. Run the experiment and start the experiment. And now you see the difference. Quite a difference. So you can see the, the sky. Mm -hmm. And the stars. Okay, so and you see you see the, the the stars and you see the road so everything is properly illuminated okay so uh, this is the type of work that you can do 
uh, with this and actually if you click on you, you see a tab above that say Ursa Major if you could click on that one you see uh, to the left the constellation with no light pollution and if you click on the tab of the right Ursa Major current light pollution mm -hmm. you see that uh, it's not so bad although there is some light pollution there so I there's improvement there is improvement that we can we can implement there okay so uh, now I want you to go please to the to the needless slide to show uh, the uh, ah no sorry 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 Mati sorry please go to the additional go back there and go to additional information uh, back to the other one yeah and then you see additional information down there and uh, uh, let me let me open in my own so let me run the experiment okay so you should see some uh, parameters when you go to run it ah if you go to run the experiment tab you have something there one tab there go back to run the experiment yeah you have something a tab that says data output on the uh, beside the, yeah, exactly so there you have some numbers that can help you evaluate more or less the result of your uh, of your options okay this, this um, might be particularly okay, interesting now for somebody if like. Go uh, I was just going to say for Anita because Rosa Anita is asking. She's a mathematics teacher and she'd like to use some of this. So when you start to see data, then it absolutely is something that she could use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is perfect. That is uh, actually it's a very nice exercise uh, when you're talking about mathematics because uh, I mean you can show to the mayor of your town that primary mathematics is enough to understand how much money we can we can save by proper illumination <laughs> okay now we go to the needless slide please exactly so when you enter the platform you will see several applications this is towards the da the, the the bottom part of the the the, plat the, the, the website and you find this beautiful house you will be able to hear a crow and some crickets and things like that and uh, I, I, um, you, you see there a house and you see the beautiful starry sky you see someone to the right with a telescope observing the sky and then the owner of the house says well it's dangerous out here I'm going to put four light poles here so Matt if you could please uh, uh, populate the, the road with the light four lamp lights and uh, we are losing the sky and no stars we lost all the stars now if you could so of course the owner says mm, maybe this is not good the astronomer is really angry so the, he decides to to shield the lamp on the top so if uh, Matthew you could click once you will shield uh, so it's a partially shielded light it gets better but still doesn't work properly now he has to change it to fully shielded which Matty is going to do with another click in each lamp exactly and now the, the sky is uh, starting to appear and actually he's going to turn off two of the lamp the, of the poles just clicking once more you, you turn it off and uh, even better and now you can lower the height put it very low in the floor in the ground and you will see that you can have illuminated streets and the dark in the in the in the starry sky at the same time so everybody is happy so this is a very nice tool also to to use again the link is in the in the scenario in, in the same uh, scenario I was showing and uh, um, last I would like to to show you the light pollution map uh, it's a very nice uh, platform where you can uh, put your location and find out uh, what is the light pollution in your area maybe Matthew you, you can close this uh, white uh, box and uh, write the name of your location there and check how well you are so you have uh, after you close it there is a find location exactly if you can type in the place where you are choose it and uh, it will go there you probably will have to to uh oh 
you live in a horribly polluted area, not too good. If you zoom out a little bit, you will see that maybe there are better regions, so you have a lot of work to do there. You have to tell those teachers of yours that they need to, uh, to have their students fighting light pollution. So you have, you have, you have problems there. And uh, the last link that we have is the, the preview. Uh, I think uh, Mati also has that uh, ready there for us. Uh, that is the preview. Actually, um, I would ask you, if possible, Mati, to enter. I will put here in the chat box. All of you can enter if you want. Uh, this is, um, is the link of a teacher for one of the scenarios. And if you enter this link, uh, you have to click to, to put a username uh, and a, a, a passphrase. The username is Rosa. And the passphrase or the email is my email, but this email that I'm writing down here, you have to use those credentials to get into this teacher uh, link. And um, once you're in, so Mati, if you could please try to get in into the, this link and use these credentials. You are in, no, 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 you are in the preview. Uh, you have to, to click in the, the link that I put down here in the chat box. You have another link, which is uh, uh, the teacher view of one of the scenarios. Exactly. Now when it has answer f ask for... Ah, you're in. F fantastic. Perfect. Now, I if you click on assessment, There is nothing there uh, because um, there is no, no students have done anything yet. But here you will be able to see several things. You see SD real time statistics where you can see uh, how many students have uh, uh, answered or not the questions, how many are correct, how many are wrong. If you click on PS questions, you see the, the level of proficiency of your students in solving the questions. Uh, and you can compare it to the PISA results. Uh, the average of OECD or if your country has PISA with your country. Um, if you go to the subject domain questions, uh, these are questions that you include in the, in the, um, in the form. Uh, at the beginning you have two questions, multiple choice questions. You can see how well your students did. And uh, we don't have any student here. Actually, if you click in all students, you will see two hoses here. Uh, to to uh, go, go down a little bit, you, you see under number of assessment questions two, exactly, you see two houses, that would be me. And if I had answered the questions, you will see the answers there. If you click there, you can see and evaluate each student individually. And uh, the last uh, tab, uh, if you go back to the top, you can see the class average time per phase. And that will let you know who did the work and who didn't. So I perform this activity in schools and sometimes, of course, I stay there for one hour and you will see that they spend like this. This activity is supposed to take from 45 to one hour. You see the kids that took 10 minutes in one phase, 15 minutes in another one, so on and so forth. And you see those that, that, that stayed five complete seconds in each, in each phase. And of course, they didn't get anything right. All the questions were wrong because they didn't spend enough time. So these are, are, are useful tools. And if you click on the settings, you can uh, view, uh, you're viewing this as a student. But you can change it to see it as a teacher. Okay? And uh, if you click teacher, and now if you scroll down a little bit, you will see what is the correct answer to the different questions. And uh, also for the, the problem solving questions, you will also see which are the, the problem solving questions um, are questions where all the answers are correct. And you are uh, trying to, to, to see who are the high performer, middle performer, or low performer. And you also know which uh, are the ones that are in, in each situation. Of course, as a teacher, you might think these questions are not OK. I want to change them. If you clone and have your own scenario, you can do whatever you want. You can even use, it, use this one as a basis for creating another scenario about another topic, if you wish. Okay. Um, I think I shared and showed everything that I wanted to share and show. 
maybe I hand over to, to the audience if they want to ask anything. Just want to state again Indeed. that uh, we are here to help and support you if you want to Any use this uh, platform. Any questions? Any any issues anyone wants to raise? Uh, Nito, I hope we, we you see how you can use it for Matt's teaching. Um, we will have a recording, of course, of this afterwards, and you can always contact Rosa as well, too. She's given her email address, and we'll give another email address in a few moments as well. Okay. Well, just while people are thinking, maybe if they have some questions, I'm just going to put up the uh, closing slides, uh, which are there now, just to remind you about a couple of other things. Um, just uh, don't forget our observing challenge, which is all very linked to uh, what Rose has been talking about as well, of course, and it's also another way of, of engaging with students. We know that for many people, school is finishing or almost finished, but maybe you're looking for some nice activities to do right at the very end of the year. So you can always uh, both, obviously, the, the light pollution one is one that you can do, and also you can look at the, um, the observing challenge as well. Uh, good to know that everything was nice and clear, Anita. Thank you very much. Um, don't forget our survey. So uh, we um, we have here quite a few people from different countries taking part in the <coughs> webinar this afternoon. Please give us your feedback. Please tell us what you think of ISE. We really need to get your input. If you haven't filled in the survey yet, please do so. It won't take you very long, and we'd really want to hear what you think of the service and what you think of what ISE is providing and what it could go on to provide in the future. We have one more webinar in this series, which is taking place on the 13th of July, so in just three weeks, and uh, that is about the NASA Kepler mission taking place on the 13th of July, and uh, we're really delighted to have uh, Alan Gould from UC Berkeley, who's going to be joining us for this webinar, and uh, I know that we will have um, lots of people who are interested in that. Good to see you're going to summer school, Anita, as well. Uh, thank you, Carolina, as well. And that's just our final comments, final uh, remarks, just to um, follow us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter, rather, like us on Facebook, take a look at the YouTube channel, and uh, don't forget the SlideShare account. Everybody who took part this afternoon will be hearing from my colleague Alberto with a link to the recording. Uh, so if you'd like to, um, if you want to have a look at that, please do, and pass it on to your colleagues. Anything else we should be saying, Rosa, before we come to an end? No, just uh, please uh, come back, keep connected to us. We promise to come back with more all the time. We're just get adding to the resources uh, according as time goes by. So hopefully you enjoyed this afternoon and found some of those resources very helpful. I'd like to thank my colleague uh, for the support and meeting support and for showing us around the various different sites that we had this afternoon. And uh, thanks to you, Rosa, as always, for uh, really having so much enthusiasm and so much to share. It's been really nice this afternoon. So thank you very much, and bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you and Matthew very much. Bye.